And it's funny because it manifested in me getting really hungry and ordering McDonald's on Uber Eats. And then five minutes later being like, man, Uber Eats, McDonald's sounds like a great idea right now. And then like an hour later or 30 minutes, I don't remember, <laughs> I had two different orders of McDonald's show up on my door. So it's like, you just got to be careful even with the, the relatively common mixes. This podcast is for educational and entertainment purposes only. Our goal is to educate and inform others about the realities of substance use in an engaging and entertaining format. We share these experiences so you can experience them without trying them yourself. By listening to this podcast, you agree not to attempt to recreate anything found in this episode or in any of our other content. We are not confessing to any acts stated in this podcast. The content in this episode should not be treated as factual or real in any way. Magic mushrooms might be able to cure addiction. For people suffering with severe PTSD, the benefit of talk therapy could be greatly improved with an unlikely drug, MDMA, popularly known as ecstasy. Could a drug stop suicidal thoughts in hours? Well, there is a drug. It's called ketamine. It's an anesthetic also used illicitly as a club drug, and it's now being used by some doctors who have patients in a serious suicidal state. This Tuesday, voters in Colorado will decide on whether to decriminalize psychedelic mushrooms. They're illegal almost everywhere, but their apparent health benefits have put them on the ballot. You're listening to Modern Day Hippie, the podcast about doing drugs in a responsible, fun, and safe way to improve your life. We're your hosts, Yuki and Reggie, and we hope you enjoy the show. What's up, guys? Welcome to episode number one of Modern Day Hippie, where we're going to be covering the 10 commandments of drug use. These are the 10 rules that we think anyone who wants to do drugs is doing drugs, uh, should definitely adhere to and are very much built from our own experiences, the experiences of those people around us, um, and what we've heard around in the uh, the drug user world. So we'll go ahead, we'll dive right in with some heavy hitters here. So first and foremost, number one is to test your drugs. I know this one doesn't sound very sexy. It's not probably what you want to hear, uh, but we do heavily support doing drugs in a safe and controlled manner here. Uh, and you always want to make sure that you know what is actually into these substances that you're putting into your body. There are quite a few uh, accessible drug test kits that you can buy online. A uh, personal favorite of mine is through dancesafe.org. Um, they send you test kits for various types of drugs, depending on what you want to do in totally indiscriminate packaging. So you don't have to worry about you know, your neighbors or, or your parents being all sus about what you're doing. And they have different compounds that allow you to easily test different drugs that you're doing for common substances that they're cut with um, or things that could harm you beyond the intended uh, usage and, and consequences of, of a drug. And that's not a company that we're sponsored by or anything. We just think that they have a good product. Exactly. Maybe in the future, but not quite yet. All right. And I'll let Reggie take it up with number two. So the second commandment of drug use is that drugs are borrowing time from the future. Now, this is something that I was actually told by a therapist in college, and it really stuck with me because the more I thought about it, the more it made sense. For example, um, if you take Adderall, you're going to be really productive for like four hours or whatever, but then you're going to crash. And you're really just borrowing that productivity from the time that you're going to crash in the future. And it's the same thing with alcohol, right? Like you're drinking, you have a great time, you're drunk, and then the next day you're hungover. You really just borrowed that from the future. I'll admit it doesn't apply to all drugs, but in a lot of situations, it holds true. And it's really just something to consider whenever you're doing drugs. And honestly, it's a great way to think about kind of some of the implications and consequences of doing drugs, like even ones that everything that we advocate for in terms of drug usage are not meant to be you know, harmful or, or cause any, uh, you know, many negative effects. Um, but there are always, you know, trade-offs uh, with, with anything that you do in terms of a drug or, or anything that you put in your body in general. So that's a good framework to, to keep in mind. And uh, I think very astute of that therapist to have told you that drugs are borrowing time from the future. Yeah, I totally agree. Going into number three, uh, it is to do drugs at their natural cadence. So this one, of course, depends on the drug. And what I mean by this is that most drugs have a natural time span by which it takes your body time to clean them out, get them out of your system and, and reset yourself to a solid baseline. So for example, if you're doing like Molly, MDMA, ecstasy, uh, you know, that's said to have a recovery timeline of 
you know, let, let's say two to three months. Uh, and I really try to avoid doing those substances uh, in a shorter time span than that. Other drugs, completely different, you know, psychedelics, much shorter period than that. Um, and, you know, things like, like weed uh, don't necessarily have that same paradigm. You know, you can smoke a lot uh, if you want to, you'll build up your tolerance to it. Uh, but ultimately, you know, especially for harder drugs, it's a good way to pace yourself uh, in doing them in a responsible manner and keeping track of, you know, making sure you're not doing them too much and keeping control of you know, not becoming uh, addicted to some of these drugs that definitely can be if you overuse and, and abuse them. And guys, I also want to say this isn't even just a safety thing. Like the drugs stop being as good if you abuse their natural time cadence and do them too often. So like if you're doing Molly every weekend, popping the Molly is not going to feel nearly as good the third time as the first time. So uh, it's, it's also important just to maintain that experience, you know? Yeah. And that really gets into kind of that saying of people are just always chasing that, that first high, which I think with a drug like Molly, um, is exactly like you mentioned, where if you're doing it too frequently, you feel like you can never get to that exact same 100% sense of euphoria. And, you know, I, I really try to not do Molly, especially more than once every two months at the most frequent. So I know if I do it more often than that, it will drop off significantly just in terms of the enjoyment that I get out of it and, and the experience that, that it provides me. So the fourth commandment is to have a drug accountability person. Now, I think this is especially important whenever it comes to psychedelics, because especially if it's your first time, because a lot of people react in ways that are just unpredictable. And you definitely just want a sober person around you who can kind of maintain a sense of reality and just kind of, you know, drive you somewhere if you need to be driven or, you know, help you out with like, even your basic needs, depending on how hard you're tripping or how much, how many drugs you're taking really. And I mean, besides psychedelics, it's just really important to make sure there's always at least one responsible person in the room because you never know what can happen with drugs. Um, and you always want to err on the safer side. If everyone's fucked up, then you could just end up with a disaster. And even zooming out on that same concept, you know, if you know that you're doing drugs pretty frequently, you know, you're going to raves or, uh, you're doing shrooms pretty often. It, it's good to have people outside of that immediate setting who just know that you're doing that in general. For example, just you know, telling a trusted friend that you know this is something that you're doing on on a pretty frequent basis, and so that will kind of put them in a spot where they can notice. You know, maybe if you're taking things too far um, from more of an external perspective. So I think it is valuable to try to have that outside viewpoint, of course, from from someone who you trust. Um, to both keep you accountable and obviously, you know, not <laughs> rat you out or anything crazy <laughs> like that. Yeah. Now moving on with number five is be extremely careful when you're mixing drugs. So my recommendation is the first handful of times that you're doing a new drug, do it only by itself. Don't mix it with anything. Don't drink on it. Don't smoke on it. Um, because generally the very first time you do a new drug, you don't really know even what to look for in terms of the effects of it. And so that first time can be a bit of a wash with some drugs. Like I know I've, I've had experiences myself. I know people who've had experiences, but the first time they do a drug, even if they do a significant dose, they won't really think that they feel it because they're just not aware of, of what to look for. And so it takes a couple repetitions to actually get a sense of what is the kind of baseline status uh, of of the drug and then you can start experiencing you know what is it like to you know have a drink while i'm on molly or on shrooms and how does that affect me from my baseline of what i would normally be on on that drug and the only way that you can actually comfortably know that and, and be aware of that is by having done the drug by itself um, the first couple of times um, there are also some drugs that you should definitely not mix uh, we can put a link in the show notes to a chart that shows the different compatibilities of certain drugs. Some work really well together. Some can be quite deadly. And so it's really important to make sure that you're fully aware of uh, of those co-effects that drugs might have. 
Yeah, and definitely, guys, don't take that lightly. Like, I've had some pretty nasty experiences mixing drugs before that should not have been mixed, honestly. I mean, there was a time where I drank a whole bunch of liquid hydro and I was drinking a lot. And then I was just playing Call of Duty and my vision just started like blacking out. I was like, what's happening right now? And so I just got up, started pacing around like the island in the kitchen until I felt better. But I mean, like that was just way too close for me. Like if I had just let myself slip into that, that comfort that I was feeling, then that could have ended honestly really badly. An example that I've experienced is especially with psychedelics uh, and alcohol, they tend to really magnify the effects of alcohol where even, you know, a little bit of alcohol that normally wouldn't make me feel anything when I'm on psychedelics will hit me a little bit harder. And especially when you toss that in, in the mix of just, you know, being in a different reality, um, <laughs> they can be a little bit jarring. And so taking those combinations, if you do uh, choose to do them just at a, a measured pace is definitely kind of the the safe and the responsible thing to do <laughs> yeah and a funny story with that actually there are some drugs that people mix quite often um that are safe to mix um or relatively safe rather such as like psychedelics like lsd or shrooms with with marijuana right so um but even with those like relatively safe or common mixes you still have to be careful because like for example one time I took a bunch of acid with some friends and then we walked all around downtown, came back and then smoked a ton of weed out of the gravity bong. And I smoked so much weed that my short term memory was just getting shot. But instead of just passing out like I normally would by smoking too much, the, site, the LSD just kept me up. So I was just saying things and forgetting that I was saying or doing them. And it's funny because it manifested in me getting really hungry and ordering McDonald's on Uber Eats. And then five minutes later being like, man, Uber Eats, McDonald's sounds like a great idea right now. And then like an hour later or 30 minutes, I don't remember. <laughs> I had two different orders of McDonald's show up on my door. So it's like, you just got to be careful even with the, the relatively common mixes. That's fucking hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right. So the sixth commandment of drug use is to always have water nearby. Um, some people call like a water bottle, your reality stick, you know, like when you're tripping on psychedelics, for example. Yes, sir. Uh, and I mean, honestly, guys, like drugs aside, just have water nearby. Like you should be drinking water. <laughs> yeah. And honestly, like it's very difficult to overhydrate yourself. Like worst case, you know, you just got to go use the bathroom more often than usual. Uh, but I found, especially when I'm like coming up on a drug and, you know, especially something like Molly or psychedelics, um, when I start getting, you know, a little bit of like nausea or a little bit of jitteriness, like my subconscious response is a little bit, you know, not comfortable necessarily. And so a lot of times I'll just have water, just drinking the water is honestly a good grounding action where it's just like a very relaxed habit. It takes my mind off of, you know, immediately what I'm feeling and then, you know, by the time you, you drink a little bit of water, you give it a, give it a few minutes, um, then you're probably you know on on the drug that you want to be and having the experience <laughs> that that you came there for. Yeah, for sure. And like you know, everyone already knows like drink alcohol or drink water with alcohol so you don't um, have, get as hungover the next day. You know, you're gonna want water around if you have cotton mouth for smoking weed or if you're sweating on Molly. Like drinking water is very important. Now <laughs> another story. <laughs> There are always exceptions to the rule, right? So a couple of years ago on New Year's Eve, I went to this party with one of my good friends and we both decided to take some LSD. And so we each took a tab of LSD. Then her and I went to the party. At the party, we ended up taking a little bit more LSD. And then once we got back home, we each took like two pills of 4-ACO DMT, which is like this research chemical. It's like a psychedelic. It's marketed as like um, synthetic shrooms, although I don't really feel like that's the best name for it. But um, anyways, we if you look at like the dosage scale online of like what a low dose and a high dose is for 4-ACO DMT, we each took like further than what was on the scale for the high dose. So we were tripping dicks, right? And <laughs> like never have I tripped this hard in my life. 
And, uh, you know, just crazy visuals, like time hallucinations, like things like, you know, slowing down, speeding up really quick. Um, but the entire night, like when we were on acid at the party and even before we got back, the girl I was with, my friend, she kept on drinking water. And I was like, hey, like, do you really need to drink that much water? Like, we're not even drinking alcohol at night. And she was like, oh, no, like, um, I, you know, I like, I like water. I feel like I need it. I'm like, okay. And she drinks around a gallon of water. Now, you can imagine whenever you're tripping super hard, you might kind of lose some of your, you know, awareness of what's going on in your body because you're so in your mind, right? And uh, long story short, she ended up pissing in my bed five times (laughs) with me just swapping out her underwear with different, like, pajama pants I had. And, uh, you know, it was... It was embarrassing for her. At the end of the day, we had like, a great time, and and she was, you know, like happy she did it and everything. But you guys, you don't want to set yourselves on the path of a bad trip by drinking excessive amounts of water and losing control of your bladder. So uh, always an exception to every rule. Yeah, I think a good way to project against that is to have a reasonably sized water bottle, so that you know when you when you finish it, you're at least aware, like, oh, hey, I finished the whole Nalgene or or whatever the hell you're yeah. using. Yeah, or or. Commandment four, have a drug accountability person that can tell you, hey, man, you don't need that much water. <laughs> yeah, that's that's very true. Nice. Okay, so now moving on to number seven. Uh, in a nutshell, it's to always plan ahead when you're doing drugs. So especially when there's a little bit more logistics involved, such as, you know, you're going to a concert, a rave, a party, and you know you'll be doing uh, certain drugs that, you know, will most likely not uh, allow you to drive anywhere uh, at any point later in the night. It's great to have a plan just knowing, you know, if you can Uber from a spot, if you can ca- catch a ride, um, if you just start feeling badly, you know, do you have your place nearby or a friend who you can stay with if you just need to like lay low for a little bit um, and get away from excessive stimulus or anything like that. Um, you know, it's good to just have that plan in place Hopefully you don't need to take advantage of it, but it is, I do find it comforting where if I'm on a lot of drugs and I'm like, you know, really feeling it, uh, just knowing that, you know, there is the, the option and that I have done a favor to my future self, uh, in the past by making these plans, uh, and just knowing, you know, what's supposed to happen. Cause a lot of times if you're on a lot of drugs, it's just like, it's difficult to think through you know, just plans like, where are we going? How do we get there? And so it's better to just have that all mapped out in your head. You know, you'll be able to recall that uh, and figure out what to do from there. So pretty simple, but I found that's saving me a lot of trouble in the past um, and you know, made sure I haven't been stuck at like random venues uh, <laughs> in places where you know, I don't want to be for too much longer after a show. Yeah, you'll definitely thank your, your future self when you plan ahead. That's for sure. <laughs> Uh, the eighth commandment is to be aware of the effects that drugs have on your body, specifically relating to how you ingest the drug, just so that you kind of are understanding some of the tolls that some of these drugs have, um, especially in the different methods of ingesting them. Right. So it goes without saying smoking is bad for you. Like, I'm sorry. I know, I know that a lot of people are going to be like, Oh, but smoking weed's not nearly as bad as smoking cigarettes. Like it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, you are burning something and inhaling it. And our esophaguses were not designed for that. Like, um, there's just so many different effects that like smoking can have on the body that we don't have enough time here, honestly, to get into, but just do a little bit of research on that. And, you'll then be more aware of uh, the way, you know, ingesting things, especially like when it comes to something like smoking, if you're taking dabs, it's going to have a lot harsher of a hit to your throat versus if you're just like using a vaporizer or something. Right. Um, And it's not just smoking, um, you know, different nose drugs. Yeah. I think especially with when you're snorting things, Mm -hmm. uh, if you're doing that too much, like, no, I know that can, fuck up your your septum and your nostrils so yeah just be aware of that a lot of those consequences don't come unless you're really heavily using some of these drugs which hopefully you're not uh but you know like i said earlier there there are trade-offs to to everything and 
it's just good to be aware and, and conscientious of those so that you fully know what you're getting yourself into, both the pros and cons. Yeah, definitely. And it'll also help you monitor the cadence that you're doing these drugs at, right? You don't want to be drinking alcohol every day. You're going to like really screw up your liver. You don't want to be injecting things into yourself too often or honestly, in our opinions, ever. <laughs> Not at all. Yeah. There's those, no those are drugs beyond recreational the drug. what we talk about here. Exactly. There is no recreational drug that requires you to inject something into yourself. That's just that's just playing a dangerous game that you don't want to play. Um, yeah. Okay. That brings us into the home stretch. So with number nine, it's going off of the last point a little bit, just to don't consistently do drugs alone. So in my opinion, most drugs are more enjoyable and almost meant to be experienced as a social experience um, and to be done with, with friends or a significant other or a group. Uh, and I think sticking to that mindset is also really helpful in making sure that you don't cross the threshold from recreational usage where you're having fun and you're getting a lot out of these experiences into you know what can actually be an addiction with a lot of these drugs. Uh, that's something that takes a lot of uh, awareness to, to avoid um, and just keeping tabs on yourself. And so a big one for me is like, you know, I'll never like rail a line of Coke or anything on my own. Uh, honestly, I won't even have access to it day to day. You know, it's more if I want it for a one-off event or for a group or, you know, a weekend of partying or something like that. Um, that's when, you know, in my brain I can be like, okay, this makes more sense for me to do. Um, you know, it's been a couple of weeks or longer than that. Um, I'm with the group. And so it's not also, you know, all on me to do a gram of Coke by myself. Uh, I have people also, you know, to share it with and, <laughs> and the people you're having your life experiences with are most of the fun, honestly. So yeah, yeah 100%. That's, that's key. Yeah. And of course, you know, some of these drugs, uh, specifically in my opinion, psychedelics can be used as tools, um, by yourself. Right. So like, for example, I took a tab of acid whenever my ex-girlfriend and I broke up and I spent hours just mapping out all, all of our memories, the good, the bad, and then just kind of condensing everything into like a few life lessons that helped me gain amazing closure. But even when I was doing that, I still had like a trip sitter, right? An accountability person. They weren't watching over me the whole time. They don't necessarily have to since I was experienced with acid at the time but they are there and they're within like earshot of me right so um still trying to keep it safe and um honestly there are a few drugs in my opinion that really warrant doing by themselves like most of them are recreational and social drugs that should be used with others in my opinion and then the 10th and final commandment is to always do your research before you do a new drug far and away the two best sources for doing this research and getting actual real stories and, and facts from the source is Arrowid and Reddit. So Arrowid is a specific forum for people to talk about doing all kinds of drugs. So there's like pages within it for any kind of substance that you could imagine. And people will talk about their stories, their experiences, pros and cons. And that's a really great area to get primary source material from people who've done the drugs. Granted, it is the internet, so you can never be 100% sure of what you read, but having prowled Arrowhead quite a good amount, um, it has been very much in line with a lot of the drugs that, that I've done um, and has honestly been a super helpful guide for me in doing different substances. That's E-R-O-W-I-D for y'all listening. And then Reddit, definitely more common website, but there are some subreddits dedicated to specific drugs. So for psychedelics, for uh, Molly and MDMA, uh, there are specific subreddits where you can probably read some of the top posts in the subreddits, read about people's stories, uh, and get kind of similar insights to Arrowhead. So usually I, I like to cross-check both websites on their respective pages for those drugs, and that will usually give me a good representative overview uh, before I'm doing a new substance or if I'm maybe, you know, upping my dosage significantly of a psychedelic, for example, that, that I haven't done before. Awesome. And that's all 10 of 
the commandments of drug use. Thank you guys so much for listening. We really fucking appreciate y'all. If you want to show us some love, it would actually mean the world to us. If you're listening on YouTube, drop the video a like and the channel a subscription. And if you're listening on a podcast, just leave us a quick rating. These few seconds of your time go a really long way in helping us out. If you want to hit us up with questions, episode ideas, or anything else, you can reach us on Twitter at mdhpod or email us at mdhpod at gmail.com. Finally, we're just getting started with the pod, and our promise to you is to make every episode at least 1% better than the last. We'll catch you next week.